I'm so excited this morning to speak to you about what I call an end time reconciliation that God wants to do in the last days. Last week, we spoke about the, d the three different types of prophets. And the reason I, I spoke to you about that was so that you can begin to see how God wants to use the gift of prophecy in the church and that prophecy and prophets still exist. Now, it's a, it's a sensitive um, subject because many people will call themselves prophets, but they are not yet fully trained. They have the gift of prophecy, but they are growing in that gift. So I want to uh, share with you how God wants to use the gift of prophecy and this, maybe even the ministry of prophecy and then the office of the prophet to actually help restore the church so it has a purpose. There's a purpose why God gives the gifts. It's not just for us to, to, to kind of uh, shine and say, look at who I am and how special I am. It's not about us. It's really about glorifying God. It's about a purpose of helping God's kingdom grow in these last days. And I always say it's a function and it's not a position. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much. Thank you, Lord, that you want to see your church restored to the fullness of what you've always intended for them, Father. And I pray, Lord, that the, the function of prophecy can really function in the church in the way it should function, Lord. And I pray this morning that you will guide and lead me as I speak, Father, to help uh, restore the church back through this gift of prophecy in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, this morning I want to speak about the word reconciliation. Now, what is reconciliation? The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter uh, seven, no, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 to verse 21, that God has given us a ministry of reconciliation in the New Testament. So what does that mean? It means God wants to reconcile things to one another. Now, the word reconciliation is a very interesting word. It is the action of making one view of belief compatible with another. So it's like one view of belief are unable to be compatible with another belief. And God wants to reconcile those things towards one another. Another definition that I found is quite amazing. Reconciliation has much to do with transformation. It is the moving from a place of separation and hurt and brokenness to a place of healing, wholeness, forgiveness, and reunion. Wow. So God is into the business of healing. God is into the business of, of bringing reconciliation and where things have been separated from one another, God wants to bring them together and reunite them with one another. I believe there's been a lot of tearing in the church. There's been a lot of uh, different interpretations. Everyone's got his own interpretation and that has caused a lot of confusion often. And God wants to use the prophetic gift and I think that's why it's, it's such a controversial gift, because if really it's used in the right way, God wants to use the prophetic gift to bring reconciliation in the last days. Hallelujah. Um, I saw a vision one day, and that's where, where God really showed me my difficult task that he has for me to bring a reconciliation and a restoration of the gospel by bringing two different aspects together. And in this dream, what I saw, this vision that I saw, I actually saw a very, very steep cliff, two steep cliffs next to one another. Now you can imagine a steep cliff. You can't even climb it on this side or a steep cliff. You can't climb it on this side. And there are two steep cliffs. And in between these cliffs, there was a tapered roller bearing. Um, you know, these, uh, I'm an engineer, and a, a, a bearing is used in your wheels and it's a very, very hard uh, tempered metal that is able to handle a lot of pressure. And so in this vision, God showed me this bearing in between these two cliffs. And I said, Lord, what does this mean? And the Lord said to me, I want to bring two very seemingly irreconcilable, irreconcilable truths together with one another. And I want to use you to be that bearing in between. I was like, no, Lord, that's a hard calling. 
And uh, over the years, I've seen how God uses me to bring reconciliation between two different aspects that are difficult to be able to bring them together and reconcile them. Maybe you say, well, is that really a a biblical prophetic purpose for uh, for the prophet? And uh, so I want to just share with you, you remember the... The dream I had where there was a book with the numbers 271 on it. Now that is what I call the restorative code. And that was a prophetic dream God gave me that will help understand two different concepts to bring them together. So the two is the 271 is in a very specific order that God has given them. And there's a purpose. You know, everything God does in a dream or even in a vision. Um, God does with a specific purpose. You remember the dream of, uh, of Joseph where he dreamt, a very strange dream that he dreamt he saw sheaves bowing before him. And later he saw um, <clears throat> the sun, moon and stars bow before him. And his father and mother was very offended. Even his brothers was very offended <coughs> at him because basically it meant that they would have to bow before him one day. But we know how the prophecy came to pass. What Joseph dreamt many years before actually came to pass at the end of his life. Many times when we have a prophecy, we think it's going to happen immediately, but it takes some time to take place. But so in this 271 vision that God gave me, or this dream that God gave me, he basically, um, I dreamt about this book. It was John G. Lake's book that I dreamt about. And it had, instead of the name John G. Lake, it had the golden numbers 271 on the book. And so this is quite a thick book about the life of a a powerful and a mighty man of God that was in the the general's book. So this is the book I spoke about, the God's general's book. And here we see uh, John G. Lake on the front of the, the cover. And he was this mighty man that... Actually, God used him to heal, according to record, hundreds of thousands of people by the power of God because of what he understood. And I believe God wants to see this generation do the same as John G. Lake has done. Not just for a specific general or a specific purpose or a person, but God wants all of us to walk in the gifts of prophecy, in the gift of healing. All of us has the same Holy Spirit and we can all walk in that same gifting. Hallelujah. Um, So, you know, why would God give a certain order 271? Because God was giving me as an engineer and as as a mathematician a numbering order, which I'm going to break open to you in the future and in much more detail. But there's this prophecy in the Old Testament called Uh, where the prophet Malachi prophesied something very interesting. And I want to show you that there's a reconciliation that God has prophesied that's going to take place in the last days before the end comes. And God's going to use the gift of the prophet, uh, the gift of the spirit of prophecy and the ministry of prophecy to be able to help restore this, um, to reconcile things in the last days. Listen to what it says. In Malachi 4 verse 5 says, Behold, I'm sending you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and the dreadful day of the, of the Lord. And he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the sons and the hearts of their sons to their fathers that I will not come and strike the earth with utter destruction. Now, this is quite an interesting prophecy. In Malachi prophesy, and he says, I will send you Elijah the prophet. And this prophet Elijah is going to come, and he is going to come before the great and dreadful day of the Lord. He's going to come before the end times is going to start, and he's going to do something interesting. He's going to turn the hearts of the fathers to the sons. And then the Bible says he's going to turn the hearts of the sons to the fathers. And in the Amplified, it makes an amazing statement. He says he's going to reconcile the hearts of the fathers to the sons. Hallelujah. And so there's a big reconciliation that's needed in the last days. And God has given me a very strong spirit of discernment and the gift of discerning in the spirit so that I could help with the putting together of this reconciliation. 
you know, we're going to see that in the future when we look at end time prophecy. There are so many interpret interpretations of the end times. And each one has a valid reason why they believe their side is correct. Then there's another valid reason scripturally why they believe they are right. And I believe God wants to reconcile even those people with one another. And that is my hard purpose, my, the difficult calling to be the bearing between all these seemingly irreconcilable truths to be able to bring them together. Hallelujah. So here we see something interesting, which I never saw before. And maybe I'm going to reveal something new to you today, but this is really what the 271 is all about. It's first the two, then the seven, and then the one. But look at what it says here in Malachi. He, Elijah the prophet, which is the, the office of the prophet, is going to be used to turn the hearts of the fathers to the sons first. Hallelujah. So if you begin to understand this, you begin to see that there's really a, a way that God wants to unlock things, and it must be unlocked in the right way. Remember, Jesus says that new wine must be poured into new wineskins. You cannot put old wine into an old wineskin. If you put the old wine, okay, old wine into a new wineskin, if you do that, you're going to lose both. You can also not put new wine into an old wineskin. That would be even worse. You need to put the new wine into the new wineskin. Many years ago, I saw another interesting vision. So I'm just sharing open visions with you that I had experienced. In this vision, I saw the hand of God coming through the universe. And God came to begin to unlock a kind of a, a combination lock of a safe. And he was going, turning the lock, and then he opened up this combination lock. And as I saw that, I said, Lord, what does this mean? And immediately the Lord spoke to me and he says, I'm not looking for a specific number. I'm looking for the combination to unlock this safe. And this is exactly what this restorative code is all about. It is literally about a combination of numbers that needs to be unlocked in the last days. Now, maybe this is all flying all over your head and you think, what are you saying? Well, the two is first, then the seven must come, and only then the one can come. So the prophecy says that God's going to send the prophet Elijah, and he's going to first turn the hearts of the fathers to the sons. So that's the first thing he's going to do. Now, all of us must turn our hearts to Jesus. We must turn our hearts to the Father. But we're going to see different things where people are going to turn their hearts to the Father from the old wineskin. Then we're going to see people from the New Testament turning their hearts to the sons from the new wineskin. And once we put this together in the right order, we're going to unlock a gospel that is so beautiful, that is so effortless, and it's far more powerful than the Old Testament understanding we had of God. But we cannot neglect the old without the new. And so many people would say, yeah, but we're not supposed to keep the law anymore, for instance. And others say, no, but we must keep the law. Others would say, no, the law is now crucified and we, we are not under the law anymore. And so there's different aspects that are quite difficult for us to reconcile with one another. But if we do it the wrong way, we will go into a trap. In the last few weeks, we saw that trap. We saw how God says, you can operate in illegal ground. And so I want to prevent the church from operating in illegal ground. So I've laid quite a few um, blocks now in, in the foundation in order to help us not to... Um, to do this order in the wrong way. Hallelujah. Um, this is one verse that's really special to me, that I believe is going to encourage you. And that is in Matthew 13, verse 52. Jesus is speaking. And he said, Therefore every teacher and every interpreter of the sacred writings who has been instructed about and trained for the kingdom of heaven, and has become a disciple, is like a householder who brings out of his storehouse treasure that is new and that is old, the fresh as well as the familiar. 
So Jesus makes an amazing statement. He says, if you're a teacher of the scriptures, if you're one that really loves the scriptures and you study, I know everybody really wants to study the scriptures. They want to understand the word of God. We, are, we have many theologians. We have many pastors. We have ministers. We have priests. Everybody wants to study the scriptures. We all try to put it together. And Jesus says something amazing. He says, every teacher and interpreter of scripture who has become instructed about the kingdom of heaven. Now, what is the kingdom of heaven? The kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven is what God came to bring us in the New Testament. We operated under the old covenant, but we were not given access to the kingdom of God yet. We were not given access to the kingdom of heaven yet. And the Bible says, uh, Jesus said once, he says, all the, um, the prophets of old, Nobody was as great as John the Baptist. And of everyone in the Old Testament, John the Baptist was the greatest. But he says, he who is least in the kingdom is greater than John the Baptist. So God is something great for us in the New Testament. But often we have kind of mixed it with the Old Testament and we try to be like Elijah. We try to be like Moses. And they were Old Testament covenant, uh, Old Covenant saints that operated in a powerful place. And we long to see what they have had also in our lives. But then we look at the new covenant promises. And according to the new covenant promises, we have a greater covenant. And we should have, according to that verse that Jesus gave us, the least in the kingdom would have greater than the old covenant guys. And so why? Why are we not seeing those kind of things operating in our lives? And that's the question I'm going to try and answer in the next few weeks. I'm going to try and unlock this this. Um, code that God has given me so that you would see how we can have both the old and the new. We can enjoy both the old and the new. Hallelujah. And so Jesus says, when you do this, you're going to bring out of the new treasure also the old and the familiar. So what really happens is now you've got a new glasses that you're putting on, you're putting the New Testament glasses on, and you're looking at the Old Testament, and you're bringing out of what you see from the New, an amazing revelation, but you're looking at the same Old Testament, and you're bringing the Old now through the glasses of the New. And when we do that, we will not be able to fall into a trap, and we'll be able to really enjoy the New Testament, and the purpose God has had for us in the New Testament. And so I wanted to share that with you today. It uh, might be a, a very difficult concept to understand. It might be uh, difficult to really reconcile them with one another because we wonder, well, I don't really understand the difference between the two even. And I'm hoping the next few programs to really sort out to you what is the difference between these things and why we can't put them the other way around and why do we need to put them in the order of the two and then the seven and then the one first. And that would be the end time restoration of the gospel. Then I'm going to share also a testimony of how God has shown me and revealed some powerful encounters that he gave me that helped me to restore the old as well as the new. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much. Thank you that, Lord, your wisdom is above that of man. And Lord, sometimes we, we only see in part. We only understand in part. And I pray, Lord, I pray for wisdom. I pray for wisdom, Father, for your church. I pray that so-called irreconcilable truths of the gospel will be reconciled, Lord, in Jesus' name. I pray, Father, that where there was arguments, where there was um, even striving towards one another and there were even jealousy and, and fighting among one another because of interpretation of Scripture, that, Lord, your Spirit will bring reconciliation in these last days in the church of Jesus Christ, Lord. Father, I thank you, Lord, that no man can reconcile us better than you can, Lord. And I pray for that reconciliation. I pray for the Spirit of prophecy that will guide and lead us, Lord, and prove to us, Lord, what is really the truth. And that you will reveal in these last days the truth that can set people free. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for your time. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this service. And I know you're going to really have a, a head scratcher after this. 
But please, stick with us, follow the next few programs, and you're going to see how it all begins to make sense. Um, if you want to know more and you want to grow with us, uh, we have a ministry called Morningstar Ministries, and uh, our Telegram channel is called Morningstar Friends. And join us there, and you can ask questions there and walk a journey with us. God bless you. Amen. <laughs>